Welcome, darlings. Today is day four of our Halloween week, and today is Dark Web Stories, and I have Miss Creepy Tales to join me to tell a story as well. Remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe so you do not miss anything this week. Now, turn off your lights. Make sure your doors and windows are locked. Things are about to get spooky. A satisfied smile stretched across my face as the drugs were pushed from the syringe. The rush I got from committing the murders was nothing compared to watching the wrong man executed for them. Keylogger by Anonymous Narrated by Miss Creepy Tales I've only had one bad experience with the deep web and it is way more than enough in my personal opinion. I'm not an overly technical person, and I'm not a tech genius. I'm no hacker extraordinaire, but I do know my way around the internet, and I have an understanding of what indexing and non-index pages, or deep web, actually are. I took a few classes on the internet security, and there were a couple sections dedicated to deep web and dark web, or at least explaining what they were and how the technology worked, like onion routing and encryption. And I felt confident enough to get on the deep web and thought that I could keep myself safe. And that confidence was my first mistake, but in my defense, this situation could have happened on the surface web. It just made it that much creepier that it was on the deep web. Because I wasn't interested in any of the illegal content on the dark web, I kept myself confined to the part of the deep web that were closer to the surface. Basically, the waiting pool of the deep web. Of these pages, I mostly visited things like forums and discussion boards, and I had this personal appreciation for anonymous conversations. And while I wasn't a troll or aggressive or anything, I was a bit more out with my opinion and personality as there wasn't a name associated with the statement. Now, in order for this to all make sense, I have to explain a bit about what happened and then kind of explain the how, because it won't make sense otherwise. As I stated, I spent a good amount of time on the forums. I spoke with people that I honestly considered my friends, and I learned a lot. It was actually kind of nice, kind of like there was a place that I belonged, like a bar, but with text and random people that were faceless. Now, on the main forum I would use, most people signed their posts and messages with a pseudonym. Of course, there was no control over this, and anyone could use anyone else's name on their post, and no one would be the wiser. Strangely enough, it was kind of an honor system, and most people followed it. My name on this site was ironically, No Girls on the Net. It was supposed to be a joke, a play on the claim that there are no girls on the internet, just guys pretending to be girls. This was ironic because I was a girl. Anyways, on this forum, I was fairly well known to a lot of people in my subboards, and people would refer to me as girl. I know, not exactly specific, but typically, when someone said girl, they were talking to me. Anyways, I was friends with a lot of people on this page, and they were all decent, never ran into anyone that I thought was really creepy for the most part. But that all fell apart 
when I got a message on Facebook one day from some guy that I had never seen before named Derek. And the message just said, Hey girl. At first, I didn't put two and two together. I thought he was just being a douche, and I told him as such. My response was simply, What an incredibly rude and derogatory way to refer to someone. Give me one reason I should even bother responding to you beyond this. This guy responds with, I thought that's what everyone called you. At least, that's what I've always called you. You're no girls on the net, right? When I read this, I was a bit freaked out. How had this person found my personal Facebook? There was absolutely no connection between me and that account, and I was always careful not to post anything that could be considered personally identifiable, and I had no idea how he could have connected the dots. I asked who he was, and he once again asked if that was my username. I didn't want to tell him yes, but I also didn't want to say anything that may indirectly confirm that it was me. So, I ended up just having to say that it wasn't me, and that I hoped that he found whoever it was that he was looking for. He responded with a smiley face, and then that was it for that conversation. I thought that was the end of it. I thought he had bought it. But I was wrong. I was very wrong. About a week later, I got a letter in the mail. And while this was a bit off, in today's day and age that is, I didn't think much of it. I took it in and opened it then pulled out the letter. It was a printed letter that pretty much just said, Don't lie to me, girl. I know it's you. I want to get to know you better. Here's my phone number. Shoot me a text when you get this. P.S. I will know that you got it. I was seriously freaked out. This guy was sending me letters, which meant that he knew my address. Not only that, but he claimed that he would somehow know if I got the letter and didn't tell him. How? That's when I looked over the envelope to see if I could find a return address. And then I realized that there wasn't one. On top of that, there weren't any stamps on the envelope either, which meant that it hadn't gone through the post office and it was most likely hand-delivered, which then told me how he was going to know I got it. My next mistake was calling the number. If I was going to fix this problem, I was going to have to do it head-on. I pulled out my phone and called him, and when he answered, he started off with, Hey, sweetheart. I was legitimately disgusted. My response to him was, I'm not your sweetheart. I don't even know who the hell you are. How did you find my information? He avoided the question, but started saying that he was in love with me and that he needed me in his life. I once again told him that I had no idea who he was and that I wasn't interested. He told me to get interested or things were going to be difficult between us. I had had enough. I told him that he was a creep and that he needed to get a life, and then I hung up. He tried calling me back a couple times, but I ignored it. Then, he texted me, and I think that I nearly pissed myself. The message that he sent me said, You're going to love me. One way or another, don't make me hurt you. Then, followed it up with, See you later, sweetheart. Obviously, I was panicked. This dude was a super creep, and he had no issue with being creepy out in the open like this. But I really didn't have much in ways of options 
since he hadn't actually done anything. Being a creep isn't really a crime until they escalate. Well, it escalated pretty quickly. It was actually that same night when things happened. Around 8 that evening, I heard a knock on my door. I, unfortunately, knew it was most likely him. I pulled the curtain open from the side window, and I saw this guy standing there in a hooded sweatshirt and black pants. Pretty obvious red flag in this case. He stood there at the door and kept knocking, then started yelling that he knew that I was home. I stayed off to the side where he couldn't see me and I dialed 911 on my cell phone. When they asked what the emergency was, I said loud enough for him to hear me that there was some creep trying to break into my house hoping that it would be enough to get him to go away. What I didn't expect was him to smash the glass of my front door with a hammer and reach in to unlock the door. What he didn't expect was my brother, a trained police officer, to come around the corner with his gun locked on him the second he stepped into the house. As soon as my brother screamed, Get on the ground! This guy started yelling, don't shoot me, and then fell to his knees. My brother restrained him, and the cops showed up to arrest him. When they got him out and in their car, they came back to tell us what they had pulled off of him. This dude came with zip tie cuffs, a large knife, the hammer obviously, and a pillowcase stuffed into the hoodie pocket. Basically, it was like that he planned to kidnap me, cuff me, put the pillowcase over my head, and take me out to his van, which he had parked just outside. In the van, they found condoms, adult toys, and various other creeper things that I don't really want to think about right now. So that's the what. But the question becomes the how. How did he find me? How did he know who I was? How did he connect my stupid username with me as a person? Easy. I was an idiot and apparently had clicked a link that he posted on the forum. This guy had linked to something on the forum page that I apparently was interested in and it had malware that loaded into my system because I had some stupid software something like JavaScript or Flash or something that was out of date, and this guy was able to drop a key logger on my system. That, plus those fantastic little things in Chrome and Firefox that will save your personal info for quicker entry. Things like your address and name and all that. Yeah, that helped him tremendously. This guy had infected my system, and I had unbeknownst to me, given him all my personal information. Then he turned into a super creep. Like I said above, this could have technically happened on the surface web, but I think it was more likely to happen on the deep web forum. Because I had taken my anonymity for granted. I thought I was safe. I thought I was invincible because my name was not connected to the board or the post. So, take that as a lesson. Do not think that anonymity is invincibility, and make sure you update your computer. The zombie horde was easy to survive. Mother Nature took the vast majority through natural decomposition. We've been hiding for decades from the hurricane of biting flies that consume everything dead or alive. I sold myself on the deep web by Doomed Geek. What do you do when there's nothing else left? 
I was a college graduate who, two years after collecting my certification, was still unemployed. There was a gaping blank on my resume. Add to that the fact that my debts were out of control, and it's fair to say I was a mess and growing even more desperate. So what was I doing about this? How was I digging myself out of a hole? I was staying up all night trawling through the internet. Is there a point which the internet does not end and sanity begins? I neither knew nor cared. I watched thousands of clips, read conspiracy theories and news reports until I blurred into a stream of hyperbole. I slept fitfully during the day and went back online the minute I woke up. I would surf even though I needed to go to the bathroom until it hurt. I forgot to eat or drink and soon I had a permanent background headache. Like a lot of addicts, it was not that long before I moved on to the harder stuff, the deep web. I was sickened by a lot of what I saw, but still immersed myself more and more when I stumbled across a site that changed my life. It looked fairly innocuous at first. There was a simple hero image of an outline of a human body and a drop-down menu in the top right-hand side accessed via three short lines. For other people, it's one more bet, one more drink. I clicked one more link. I was surprised to see only two options, buyer and seller. Was it going to buy anything real soon, so I followed the Warren marked seller? The submenu left me open mouthed. It listed items that could be sold and gave the price the seller would receive. All I needed to do was add details for my preferred way to receive payments, then tick the box next to the item. The first item on the list was likeness. For the price shown, I could pay the two months I was overdue on rent and buy wine and pizza every night for a week with what was left over. Now, I was not sure what they meant by likeness. Other items that I could sell via the website were more straightforward. Things like my social insurance number, my date of birth, even my name. A lot of these seemed like a way to commit fraud for the buyers. All very dubious, but at least, I thought, they were paying to use these details rather than simply stealing them as so often happened. Likeness seemed more ethereal though. I decided it meant the right to use my image, a photograph of my face. I also decided I really wanted a beer and pizza and to be able to tell my landlord to get off my back because I had paid your damn rent. I add my details for the money transfer and press the box next to likeness, then press submit. A transaction processing symbol turned into a transaction complete. A new box appeared giving me the option to comment. I typed, do you need me to send you my photograph, thinking this would answer my question about what exactly I just sold. A moment later, the reply came, we already have it. I flashed back to some of the things I had done in front of my computer screen, then decided I'd rather not think about it. Feeling nervous, sure I was being scammed, about to kick myself for being so naive, I checked my balance. What do you know? The money was in there. I went back to the good old innocent web and ordered the largest, most overloaded pizza I could think of and then began to add sides. It took me two weeks for me to blow through the money from selling my likeness. I had a great time without leaving my apartment and I had paid no rent. Not to worry, I told myself, returning to the deep web and my new favorite website. This time, I hovered over fingerprints. 30 seconds considering, flagged a dozen dodgy things this could lead to, but it was the money I would make that made me think, whatever. I ticked and submitted, 
This time, 10 small boxes appeared on screen with instructions for me to place the end of my fingers in them. Which I did, and within seconds the transaction was complete, and within minutes I could see that I was once again flush. Problems over, I could pay my rent, enough of my credit card to make the bank back off. In the comment box, I typed, thank you. The reply was almost immediate. You are welcome. Now, I don't know if anyone listening to this is a gambler, but I guess if they are, they would not by now have put money on me spending the money wisely. And they would have been right. This time, I told myself another couple of weeks later, I would get my acting gear. I spent a significant time going through the items I could sell and create a spreadsheet with how much I owed. So I knew the amount I needed to earn with this one final sale of parts of me. I had decided, you see, that this had to be the last time. There was a relatively small number of things left I could sell, that I was prepared to sell. My name, date of birth, and social security number were still no-goes. I did not want to risk losing the ability to have a bank account and find employment. A history of being a disaster did not mean, in my mind, that I always would be. So, one final sale it was, then clear my debts and find a job. I ticked the box next to sell body part. From the next list, ticked kidney. I was close to hyperventilating when I pressed submit. Close to tears, not long after when I checked my balance, I felt a huge pressure being lifted. With this money, I could finally get my life back on track. The comment box already had text in it. I had been too worked up to read it, so I took a deep breath and did. It had an eight-digit reference number, an address, and a time later that day. An appointment for me to have my kidney removed, I figured. I considered not going. I already had the money, so why bother? Then I thought back to the message telling me they already had my photograph. Whoever ran the website probably knew where I lived as well, or could easily find out. It was not rocket science to work out that they were probably bad people, criminals, some kind of gang, not people to cross or mess with. I felt sick as I left the apartment at the prospect of having an operation, but also elated at the amazing thing lying ahead of me. I just needed to get this over with. The address turned out to be a nondescript building on the outskirts of town. The windows were all shuttered and there was no signage, just a human outline I recognized from the website. A keypad was fixed into the wall next to the sturdy looking door. Not sure what else to do, I entered my reference number. The door slid open with a sigh. My stomach doing backflips, I stepped inside. I could hear the drone of an air conditioner but still suddenly felt very hot. Nerves, I told myself, totally natural. I seemed to be some kind of reception area, but it seemed it was deserted. Scratch that, a man appeared. He was wearing a white overalls and a mask and safety glasses. He may or may not have been smiling when he said, Welcome. Let's get you prepared. I followed him along a long corridor. The walls were blank, whitewashed, and the smell of antiseptic was growing stronger. Eventually, he turned off into a small, windowless room. I hesitated on the threshold. There was a raised table, fluorescent strips overhead, a stack of equipment next to the bed. Medical, I guessed, though I had no idea. Please, the man said and gestured that I should come in. I smiled weakly and did. He gave me a robe to put on and turned to do something to the equipment while I got changed. 
I assumed I needed to lie on the table, and when he looked round from whatever it was you had been doing and saw me, he said, Good. Made me feel like a dog rolling over and playing dead, but I kept this to myself. I did, though, have some questions. Is this safe? I asked. Perfectly, he replied without missing a beat. I wasn't sure. I felt hot to the point where I thought I was going to faint, and the light overhead was flickering, making pain start to flow above my eyes. I'm not sure I want to go ahead with this, I said. There is nothing to be concerned about, he replied, and before I realized what was happening, had nicked the skin of my neck with a needle. I immediately felt an unpleasant tingling sensation and a numbness began to spread up into my face. He picked up the tablet of the computer that was resting among the equipment and studied it for a moment before turning back to look at me and asked, Now, which eye would you like to keep? What? I exclaimed, or tried to, because my lips were numb and the words came out slurred. What are you talking about? I managed. I sold one of my kidneys, not my eyes. I did not wait for an answer. I was horrified and decided I wanted out of there. I tried to sit up, but the numbness had spread to my spine and then my arms. I was helpless to do anything but lie there and watch as he once more studied the tablet. No, no, he said in a quiet, relaxed tone. The records show that he agreed to sell a body part, but did not specify which one. I ticked kidney, I tried to say, but now my mouth would not move and I could not feel my tongue. I could feel my heart beating faster and faster. Felt like I could not breathe. Cold sweat trickled down into my eyes, blurring my vision. I could see this. I could not feel it. I wanted to scream, wanted to cry out in terror, but my jaw was locked, my limbs useless. All I could do was watch as the scalpel came into view and as he lowered it towards my left eye. It will be over soon, he said, and then the blade became a shadow over my eye, a darkness that was soon all I could see. That was then. This is now. I'm writing this in an internet cafe. After trashing my laptop's hard drive and ditching it, there's just me in here and the owner. I think he would like me to leave from the dirty looks he's giving me. But before I head off, I have one more thing to do. I have enough money to buy a coach ticket and go a long way from here away from everything and everyone I have ever known. I just logged onto the site and found what I was looking for in the seller menu. Name, date of birth, social security number. I tick sell on all three, enter the details in the box that pops up, press mint, and moments later the money is in my account. I have been withdrawing so much cash I have daily, and after I go across the road to the ATM and draw the last amount, I will snap my card in half and throw it away. This will be a fresh start, the past wiped clean left behind. I'm going to stop writing now and go. It's time to log off for good and make my escape. Only the screen has changed, the comment box has opened up, and a new message has appeared. We like and follow you. I feel tears begin to flow from my eye they did not take. When I was five, I was blessed with the power of being sent back five minutes when I died. As I woke up in the club minutes before the bombs dropped for the seventeenth time, I realized it was a curse.
And with that, darlings, we're near the end of this video. Remember, you should stay away from those places you shouldn't be. You never know what kind of trouble you might get into. Of course, thank you to the writers who let me read their stories. And thank you, Miss Creepy Tales, for joining me to bring these stories to life. Now remember, if you enjoyed these stories, hit the like button and make sure it feels it. If you're new, subscribe, because I've been telling you to so you don't miss this week. And of course, share this video with anyone who might enjoy it. We also have Patreon, merch, PayPal, and memberships if you would like to help in other ways. But of course, leave a comment so poor 242 has something to read to remind herself why being chained to that desk isn't such a bad thing once a year. As always, thank you for watching and listening. Sleep tight, and don't let me bite.